All right, welcome, welcome once again. Um, for today's practice, all you will need in terms of props, I mean, you're welcome to bring blocks if you like, but all you're going to really need um, is a blanket rolled up to put underneath your sit bones so that you can lower the hips a little bit. And let me demonstrate that for you now while you go grab one. Just move into your comfortable seat and bring whatever foot feels more comfortable in the front. And here, the benefit of the rolled blanket or towel is that you can have your hips a little bit higher, hopefully the knees a little bit lower. If you're really tight like me, um, this has been an ongoing process. You're probably tired of hearing it by now in these videos, but I have very tight hips and thighs. So oftentimes it's difficult for me to get into a really comfortable seated position. And that's why sometimes you see me kneeling at the beginning and end of the videos. But I wanted to thank you for being here again. We're almost towards the end of our video journey. And in looking towards new beginnings, when I finish and I'm able to integrate this practice more into my professional life, um, I wanted to read a section from Michelle Cassandra Johnson's Skill in Action, Radicalizing Your Yoga Practice to Create a Just World. And um, this book in particular was very influential um, for me in thinking through the ways that yoga could be used for political practice, both on and off the mat, and also ways in which um, we can become embodiments of the principles of yoga philosophy. So this comes from page 15 and 16 in the book. A new way of living. Yoga means to yoke. It means bringing together things that seem to be in opposition, like our mind and body, or our heart and spirit. Yoga gives us the opportunity to show up and practice again and again, to start over. We are living in a time where we need to begin again. The practice of yoga teaches us to act skillfully and radically moving us beyond the borders of our individual minds, hearts, bodies, and spirits. The practice of yoga offers principles and guidelines that instruct us on how to take skillful and radical action. Many of these principles are based on the ancient yoga text, the Yoga Sutras. Sutra means to string or thread, and the Yoga Sutras com comprise the four different chapters, includes 196 Indian Sutras. The focus of this book is on two tenets of the eight-limbed path of yoga, the yamas and niyamas. The yamas and niyamas will guide you through your life's journey and yogic path. The yamas focus on our interactions with others, and the niyamas focus on our inner world and our relationship with the self. So from here, she goes to, on to list the various yamas and niyamas, explain them a little bit. Most of us are, of course, familiar with them from reading Deborah Adele's book. But the one thing that Michelle Cassandra Johnson does, and I encourage you to check this out either in her book or in her workshops, is to situate those philosophies within a larger social political context. And so as we go through today's practice, if you don't already have an intention, I invite you to share in mind, which is the intention to not only be my best self, but also show up and learn for others. So how can I show up, be present, and learn for others, and in the process of doing, doing so, um, truly become an ally, truly become a co-collaborator um, on and off the mat. All right, as we begin to let that question wash over us, Let's keep the spine nice and engaged. Crown of the head pointing straight to the skies. We're awake. We are alive this morning. Breathe in with me. And exhale. Through the mouth or the nose, whatever you choose. Inhale one more time. And exhale it out, whichever way you choose. Once more. And 
Ja. Okay, now on this next inhale, let's raise the arms up. You can open the eyes if you haven't already done so yet. And just give a big stretch, a big hello. Let's wave to the skies above us, to the universe, to the cosmos, saying hello, and also welcoming the fact that we are part of them and that they need us just as much as we need them. You can even squeeze the fists, uh, working out those wrists, limbering up, feeling flex here in the forearms on both sides. And as you move in, maybe you breathe in, and as you move out, maybe you breathe out, you can reverse. Back the other way, inhale. And exhale. Pause, reverse, inhale. Pause, reverse, exhale. And reverse, inhale. And now let's open up the hands. Thankfully, we're grabbing on to the stars and pull down slowly, engaging the back, pulling the stars using every inch of strength that you have in your body. And you'll know when to stop when your heart is open and your back shoulder blades feel like they're kissing. And let's hold here for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale the arms up, keeping them engaged. And pulling down one more time, slowly exhaling. We are powerful. We are strong. We can hold our weight and the weight of the world if we need to. Inhale one more time and one more grip and pull down all the way so we feel those back shoulder blades kissing inhale the arms up and this time let's exhale over to the left bringing the right arm to the knee and the left arm behind us keeping that spine engaged and every time that we breathe out let's go inhale keeping that spine straight and still keeping it straight when we exhale Let's try to sink a little bit deeper into that posture and hold here for five, four, three, two, one. Now inhale the arms back up. And exhale to the other side. And same thing, keeping that spine straight. Let's sink a little bit deeper on our exhales and hold for five. Four, three, two, one. Inhale up, back to the other side. And the tendency here might be to have your legs rise even further. This is another benefit of having the bolster underneath us. Your tendency here might be to sort of crouch forward and have the leg follow the body as you twist. But try to stay nice and anchored. You can always readjust yourself if that feels more comfortable. And once you feel set, we're inhaling the arms up, keeping the legs grounded, and holding again here for five, four, three, two, one. Up with an inhale, pause, and exhale. Back to that other side. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale it up, and we're going to do one more on either side, and really, then we're going to get going. So exhale it down. Inhale. And exhale to stretch a little bit deeper. And five, four, three, two, one. Inhale it up, and you know where we're going. One more time. Hold for five. Four, three, 
two, one. Inhale up. And now let's exhale it forward, bringing the hands out onto the floor as far as you can get them. I feel just comfortable that coming back to your seated position, modifying that way, by all means, please do so. If you feel like you can crawl the hands out a little bit further, keeping the spine as straight and engaged as possible so that the pranayama can flow beautifully, you just want to reach out and push with the back shoulder blades as if you were trying to rocket them through the back of your shirt, back of your top. And just stay engaged with the arms, fingertips, really active on the floor here. Let's breathe in. Five, four, three, two, one. And a big exhale. On the next inhale, let's walk it over to the left side as far as you feel comfortable as you're inhaling. And hold here for five, four. Three, really feeling that side body stretch. Two, one, and exhale. Inhaling it back to the center. Pause and let's walk it over to the other side now. And hold here for our inhale for five, four, three, two, one, and exhale it out. Pausing for a moment on our next inhale. Let's come back to center and walk the hands back. Coming back to our seated position for a moment. And when you are ready, let's slide off of our bolster if we have one and meet in tabletop position. So you can tuck the toes underneath and lean back. Just to kind of stretch out the feet for a second. So you want to make sure that your wrists are with you, that they're able to help you with whatever work, whatever karma, uh, whatever uh, dharma, rather, that you have in your life. So let's keep them nice and engaged in the fingertips, our hands, and that way we don't have too much pressure on the wrists. And when we engage the biceps here, we can feel that full upper body engagement. And at the same time, like we have the top of the feet on the back of the mat, Let's push down, and then as we push, you can feel the engagement of the core. So we have a real full body engagement here. This is a resting position, but it's a very engaged resting position. All right, and then as soon as you're ready, let's inhale it up, down. Keeping everything engaged and exhaling down, cat really pushing away pushing through that back body as if our shoulder blades were once again rocketing out of the back of our tops into the sky. Inhaling up. Let's hold here for three, two, one. Exhaling down, cat. Hold here for three, two, one. Inhale for three, two, one, and back to exhale. Three, two, one. Now, take a moment finding your own pace here, finding your own micro flow. Maybe you want to rock the hips back and forth as if you're coming back into a child's pose, but stopping from fully sitting down. Just rotating, just kind of feeling the sensuality of your body just working your hips in a way that maybe you don't often do that. So we can go to the left. And then as we come forward, we breathe in. And then as we go back, we exhale. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Now let's pause here, almost in child's pose and reverse it. So. Inhale as we bring the hips to the left, around to the right, and exhale as we get towards the back of the mat. Inhale forward, exhale. Inhale forward, exhale. And now one more time. Inhale forward, 
exhale. All right. Now, when we feel ready, let's claw forward, bringing ourselves down onto the mat. Hands tucked underneath shoulders, elbows hugging to the side body, feet engaged on the mat, pushing down, legs pushing down. Try not to lift the knees too much off the mat right now. We will work on that later. And when you're ready, just take a really, really soft inhale for baby cobra. Looking forward just slightly. Again, keeping that hug to the side body. And let's hold here for five, four, engage the core, three, two, one, and lower down. Move the head if it feels good, if it suits you today, if it's not too weird for you. Move the head back and forth, rolling it from side to side, massaging that forehead, maybe even your nose. Maybe even your nose is kissing the mat a little bit here. You can even give your nose a massage without the forehead if that feels good. It's something weird. I've never done that before, but it feels kind of good. Give it a try. One of the best parts of our yoga practice is that we get to be playful together. And as long as we maintain that sense of play, that sense of youth, we can look at the world and begin to find the new life that Michelle Cassandra Johnson was talking about. Because in that innocence, there's also the essence of equality, of justice. And if we all have a very innocent, loving approach to one another, that's when we, we can begin to make real social and political change. All right, so let's tuck the toes under, push up into plank. So we have a full body extension, core is engaged here. You don't wanna be dropping down. So if your core, if you can, if you can engage the core here to give yourself a nice straight line from the top of the crown, all the way to the heels. You can definitely modify here and drop the knees if that's more comfortable, if your arms are shaking a little bit too much. There's no judgment here. It's all about what feels right for you. And then when you're ready, let's hold here for five, whatever version you're in. Three, two, one. And bring the hips up. You can even lift the toes here. Coming into our first downward dog of the day. Let's pedal it out. Every morning I'm super tight in the legs. So this feels so good. And we can look underneath the left bicep. Look underneath the right bicep. Slowly finding our breath here. And it doesn't matter if our heels are not touching the mat. All that matters is that we're engaged. Full body engagement here. And we rest for five, inhale, exhale, four, inhale, exhale, three, inhale, exhale, two, inhale, exhale, one. And I invite you to walk softly in whatever steps you feel to the front of the mat, very, very deliberately, almost as if you're crawling like when you're a little kid and you're walking very, very slowly, very, very cautiously because you want to go downstairs for a midnight snack, but you're worried that you're going to get yelled at. Uh, speaking of snacks, I could go for some cookies right now, but I digress. So here we are in a forward fold, just bend the knees, do whatever feels good here. This is all you. This is totally your moment to be you. If you want to add a little shake of the booty here, by all means do that. If you want to rock side to side, please take a minute to do that. If you want to look at hands, hang low, go ahead. Really just feel that soft bend. Start to wake up 
some hamstrings, you can even give them a nice little pat, nice little wake up call. Or you can grab the elbows and just take a moment to swing back and forth, back and forth. And letting the arms go on your next inhale. Let's roll up as softly as we can to the point where slow motion seems even too fast. It takes real discipline, real tapas, to be able to roll up that slow. I have a tendency to go super fast and, uh, you know, not really love and embrace everything that the nice slow roll up can offer in terms of getting to know my body. So I encourage you every time you roll up to really consider what it means to unfurl your body like that. And coming into mountain, nice strong feet, all four corners of the feet planted, thighs engaged with that little lift up. And when you lift in the thighs, you can also feel most of the time that that same engagement will also begin to activate the core. So you can think of those two as a loving team that embrace each other. So in the same way that those parts of our bodies um, the universality of the way the body works together, we can almost think of that as a metaphor for the way we carry ourselves in society. I just thought of that. Arms engaged, palms facing forward, and on your next inhale, let's bring the arms up overhead into prayer and even bending backwards from the hinge of hips slightly, just a little bit, keeping the feet planted. Let's just stretch that lower back for five, four, three, two, one, and exhale down. Coming back into that forward fold, maybe we straighten the legs a little bit more, just a tiny bit more this time than we did earlier. Inhaling to flat back, so here, you can imagine a number seven. You don't have to actually try to produce it. Don't be so fixated on the image of the number seven, but just try to imagine, you can even close your eyes here. Just try to imagine your body is that number seven. So where would the certain um, angles be? Where would the folds be? And to create this feeling, you can either have the arms on the hips like this, with the shoulders back, elbows in, just like when we were in Baby Cobra earlier. You can have them on the knees, you can have them on the shins, or you can have them reaching the mat below if that feels comfortable. So exhaling from whatever variation you choose of the flat back, let's plant the hands on the mat. Step that right foot back. Step that left foot back. And come into plank. Lower down. And let's come into baby cobra one more time. Keeping the feet engaged, maybe we rise up a little bit higher, just a little bit. Remember, we're still tight, still early in the practice. And exhale down, tucking the toes under, pushing up from the hips, back into our downward dog. And we pedal it out again. And then we just walk very slowly all the way back to the top. Meet in whatever version of the flat back that we chose earlier with an inhale and exhaling it down back to our forward fold. Soft bend in the knees. Inhale the arms up. And again, just a little bit of that bend from that middle hinge, that middle hip hinge, going backwards. And with an exhale, we bring the palms to the heart, thumbs touching, and bend down back into mountain. All right, let's go one more time. Inhale up. Leaning slightly back. Exhale forward to our forward fold. 
Inhale to whatever version of flat back suits us. Exhale. Now this time, let's bring the right foot back, but not the left foot. Let's plant the fingertips. Let's bend the right leg. We can even bring it to the mat. If you feel like this is more comfortable, please go ahead and modify here. If not, you can keep the toes tucked under and really stretch that back leg. And when you come forward on, you know, bringing your chest towards that left front thigh, you can keep the ankle right underneath the knee and really open up that chest. Really feel that heart shine, keeping the back as straight as possible. Engaging the core here. And then on your exhale, you straighten both legs, bring the forehead down, and really embrace that stretch, opening it up in the left thigh here, left calf, and also really picking up where we left off on that right back leg stretch when we were in a, a modified low lunge. Inhale forward, back to that open heart. And exhale back. And we hold here for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale forward, plant the hands. And we bring that left foot back into downward dog. Coming forward into plank. Exhaling it down, coming up into our cobra. Exhaling down. Inhaling back up into the downward dog. And coming forward to whatever position feels good. Our version of the flat back. We exhale, forward fold. And inhale up, slight back bend, feeling a nice juxtaposition here from when we were in Cobra. What feels different? What different sensations do you have in your back here from this low, or I should say slight back bend while we're standing versus when our belly is found in that? And exhale the arms down, beating at the chest, at the heart and down to the sides. All right, one more time through sun salutation A. Inhale up, slight back bend, exhale down, forward fold. Inhale, flat back, hold here for three, two, whatever version works for you, one. Exhale, so this time, let's bring the left foot back and not the right foot. And we're going to stretch it out just like we did on the other side. So you can, again, by all means, if you feel more comfortable with the left knee on the ground and the top of the foot planted, please do that. If you want to have that back leg up, if that's more comfortable for you, then come forward. You can even scoot the left foot a little bit if it helps here for a better stretch. Really sinking down. And bringing that chest forward. And when we exhale, just like on the other side, let's straighten the leg, bring the arms forward. And try to bring our forehead to the knee. And inhale forward. And exhale back. Try to loosen it up as much as possible. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Inhale forward. And then this time when we exhale, let's plant your hands, bring that right foot back into downward dog. Inhale into plank and let's hold here for five, four, three, with that straight line, two, one. Exhale, lower down. One more time. Inhale. Keeping the feet planted, legs on the ground. A little bit higher. Maybe this is the highest cobra we've done so far. And exhale down. 
tucking the toes under, pushing up into downward dog. And then this time we can take a little bit bigger step. Maybe we step halfway up the mat with our left foot, halfway up with the right foot, and meet at the very top in our flat back, whichever version you choose. Exhale it down, forward fold. Hold here for three, two, one. And with a slight bend in the knees, inhaling the arms up. Slight back bend, palms overhead in prayer. And exhaling back into mountain. All right, take a moment here, adjust your mat. Sometimes one of the joys of practicing at home is having a mat that is either on a carpet, a rug, or some other flooring that moves. Not ideal, of course, um, but if you have the opportunity to put down a, um, a rug, you know, the mat that you would put underneath a rug, like a freestanding rug, that sometimes can help ground your mat. Obviously the mats themselves have the um, kind of sticky rubbery material that will hopefully keep it in place. But um, it just so happens that right now I'm practicing on a carpet. And so the mat is sliding a little bit, but it's a, it's a mat that is uh, an excellent quality. And so really, I encourage you to think about if you're getting serious about your practice, ways in which you can get a mat um, that is an investment because if you're gonna be doing this every single day or most days, you're gonna to wanna to feel secure. And that's gonna be the element that allows you to bring all of these philosophies into your everyday life. Okay, so meeting this time the mountain, instead of bringing the arms all the way up, let's sink down with the knees and just sink as much as comfortable right now. Inhaling the arms forward. They don't have to go up, but they can go forward here. While we do our first Utakanasana, chair pose of the day. And let's hold here for three, two, one. Exhaling down, forward fold. Inhale the flat back. Exhale, planting the hands. Stepping the right foot back, stepping the left foot back, coming into plank for five, four, keeping that straight line. Three, two, one, lowering down, tucking the feet, tops of feet on the back of the mat or on the top of the mat, pushing up. And this time, if you're up for it, you can either come into a, another cobra or come up into an upward dog. So you're gonna be lifting more than you have before. You're gonna go for a large back bend where you're looking straight up at the sky to really feel that activation in your core and your lower back. And with your feet, keep them nice and engaged on top of the mat and you can push up, lifting the knees here as we stare straight at the sky for five, Four, three, two, one, and tuck the toes under. Let's exhale into down dog. And on your next inhale, let's inhale that right foot up for a three legged dog, securing that left foot. And on the exhale, let's bring it through. And we rise up with an inhale to a high lunge. Just finding your security here, keeping the arms activated as if we were holding the universe between our palms, creating that scissoring effect in between the thighs that really holds us balanced so that you know we can learn how not to rock back and forth so that we can feel secure. And keeping those that left toes engaged, just check in there. Left heel off the mat, leaning forward so that the right knee 
is over the right ankle as much as possible. And then on your next exhale, you can go ahead and bring the left foot in just a little bit at a 45 degree angle, keeping it as wide as you feel comfortable. Chest, torso, stomach, facing forward over the right knee. Instead of tendency here might be to follow the left leg back and sort of open up. We're gonna get there. Right now, see the torso opens up here into warrior two, but we still keep our gaze forward. And we try to bring this section of the body as much as we can, really feeling that stretch as our arms open up, bringing the front body forward. So let's stay here for three, two, one. And on your next inhale, let's cartwheel the hands down, coming back into that lunge, planting the palms, bringing that right foot back. And let's go through a vinyasa here. Plank, lowering down, inhaling, your up dog, exhale, back to downward dog. And let's step or jump all the way to the top, leaning and flat back, whatever version you feel. Maybe you want to experiment here a little bit. And if the arms have been on the thighs, you can drop them down to the knees, or even the shins. And hold here for three, two, one. And with a big exhale, we fold forward, straightening the legs maybe a little bit more than we have so far. Hold here for three, two, one. And inhaling up. I went too high. Coming back into our chair pose. And hold here for three, two, one. And exhaling the arms down after we rise, meeting again in mountain. Okay. Inhaling forward, maybe we sink a tiny bit deeper. Maybe we raise the arms a little bit higher here, keeping the spine not as straight as possible. Exhaling forward into our forward fold. Inhale to flat back. Exhaling down, bringing the feet back into plank, holding here in your straight line for five, four, three, two. One, and we come down for our vinyasa. Pushing to upward dog. Hold it here for five, four, three, two, one. And exhaling back to down dog. Have the position of our heels changed. What's different here from what we first got into down dog this morning? Pedal it out if you need to. And on your next inhale, let's bring that left foot up, three-legged dog, and exhale it through. Landing as soft as possible. Inhaling up, really checking in, just like we did on the other side. Arms engaged, holding the universe. Right heel up, chest forward, heart open, left front leg, knee stacked over ankle as best as possible as you ease into the stretch. And on your next exhale, you can bring that right foot slightly forward at a 45 degree angle. Sink a little bit deeper here, if we can, into warrior one. And we exhale it out into warrior two, adjusting where needed, looking straight forward and really opening up on the side, staring over those left fingertips, creating a line from the left fingertips all the way back. You can take a moment to check it out. 
And just try to balance. Feel where you are straight. Feel where you might be discombobulated a little bit. And just reset. On your next inhale, let's cartwheel the hands down. Bring the right foot back. Coming into plank. Lowering down with an exhale. Inhaling up into your upward dog. Hold here for five, four, three, two, one. Exhaling into another down dog. Beautiful down dog. We see you so much. We're so thankful for your rest. And finding your breath here. Three, two, one. Let's bend the knees and step or hop to the front of the mat where we meet in our adventurous front back. And exhaling down. Inhaling up as we sink into chair. And hold here for five. Four, three, two, one. Another inhale. Come up. Hands overhead. Exhale to chest. And lower back into mountain. Okay. So how are we feeling so far? Let's take a moment. Do one more adjustment. And when we're ready, feet hip width apart. Inhale out into chair. Maybe we sink the deepest that we have so far. Maybe we raise the arms, we pivot right from our shoulders, from our back shoulder blades that we were kissing together earlier. Maybe we pivot them up and we try to say thank you. We try to raise them in thanks to the skies above. And exhale, straighten the legs, forward fold. Maybe we push on the back of the legs whether our hands are on the thighs, calves, ankles, maybe we push to bring our heads a little bit closer to the knees here. And as we push, we hold for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale to whatever flat back choice you have chosen. And exhale, bring hands down, feet back into plank. Here we hold for 10 now, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale it down, letting it all out. Bring the arms back, shoulder blades tucked. Inhaling up. Coming into a comfortable up dog position for ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. Exhale into our friend, down dog. Really just checking in with the body here and resting. Five, don't be afraid to push with the arms so that you can get a deeper stretch in the legs and that might help you get your heels down to the mat if that's something that you wanna to explore today. Six, five, four, Three, two, one, and let's inhale. The right leg up, and three-legged dog. Exhaling it forward, landing as soft as possible. We can even bring that left or right hand to help it help that left foot, or right foot rather get towards the front of the mat. Bringing the right foot in. I'm sorry, the left foot in. Inhaling up into warrior one, just like we did last time, really checking in, making sure that all of the different mechanisms are working together here. And exhale into warrior two, stretching forward in that front leg. Inhale back, peaceful warrior, bringing that left hand down the leg as much as you feel comfortable. You can let it rest on the back of that knee, feeling the stretch here in your right side body. 
try not to lose that bend of the right knee or the right ankle. And let's look underneath the left, I'm sorry, the right bicep as that bicep comes lovingly over the ear and reach and try to high five the back wall. And we hold here for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, forward. Now keeping that bend in the front right leg, we can even bring that left foot back a little bit. Let's bring the left, I'm sorry, the right, ah, left to right is uh, not easy today. Bring that right hand down using the right knee and right calf to buttress the right elbow and right shoulder. Let's come forward and reach up for an extended side angle. Really staring up at the fingertips here. And we're here for five, four, three, two, one. And we inhale back to Peaceful Warrior. And we hold here this time for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Inhale back to the extended side angle. Let's hold here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, and we bring the hands down with both hands inside of the right foot now. You can bring that back knee to the floor and even scoot out that right foot, trying to tuck the right shoulder underneath that right knee or uh, if, it's in, if that's in your practice. If it is not, like for me, I like to situate my right bicep underneath my right calf. And just give it a little stability. I'm gonna bend forward. If you are able to come all the way to the mat from this position, please do that if that's in your practice. Otherwise, you can stick here with me by just lowering as much as possible with a deep bend in the elbows or as deep as possible. Head bowed, back foot engaged for sturdiness. And we're here for five, four, three, two, one. Big inhale. And exhale it out. Big inhale. And exhale it out. And we want one more big inhale here. And one more big exhale. And on that last exhale, let's tuck the toes, the back toes under, bring the left knee up. And scoop that right leg around, coming back into three-legged dog. Now let's shake it out here. Ooh, open up the hips using those arms for stability. And we bring the foot down. How does that feel different? on either side. Let's check in with the left and the right sides of the body, specifically the legs here. What feels different? And now I invite you to step or jump to the top or back to our flat back. Exhaling down. Again, we're pushing on the back of the legs, trying to come a little bit deeper a little bit closer to our foreheads to the knees. And we inhale it up. Back into chair. Sinking nice and low. Hold here for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale it up. Slight back bend with our hands in prayer. And exhale it down. Hands to heart as we pass through down to the mountain. All right, I mean, you're doing amazing. I can't believe how time is flying right now. We're so far into the practice, but yet we have so far yet to go. So 
Let's keep it moving. Again, feet by hip width apart. Sinking down, finding that balance. Where is too far? Where, where when you begin to push your weight down to a certain point, at what point do you feel yourself going backwards? Just go to that threshold and stay right there for five, four, three, two, one. And inhale forward, forward fold. I'm sorry, exhale, hands forward fold. Inhale to flat back. Hold here for a moment, just catch your breath. Exhale, hands down, bringing the feet back into plank. Here we are again for 10, nine, eight. You are strong, you are secure, you are everything. Three, I'm sorry, six, five, four, three, two, one. And exhale, lower down. Inhale to up dog. Hold it for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Feel that shake. Exhale. Come into downward dog. And now here, left. Inhale. That right. I'm sorry, left foot up. Straight like a dog. And exhale it through, landing as soft as possible. And again, guiding with the hand if you want it to go a little bit further. You can scooch that back foot up. Inhale into warrior one. Taking a moment to check in, make sure our balance is in check, just like you did on the other side. And exhale into warrior two, maintaining that left knee over left ankle. Coming as straight as possible, arms extended, body twisting forward. Inhaling back, be peaceful warrior, letting that right leg slide down as far as possible. Inhaling, I'm sorry, exhaling forward, extended side angle, keeping that right hand reaching straight towards the stars. Straight towards the sky. Inhale. Peaceful warrior. Here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And exhaling forward. Coming into extended side angle. Again, adjust here making sure that you have hand gripping the ground, the mat, um, buttressing the left leg with the left arm. And reaching straight up. And we hold here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And we bring the arms down straightening that back right leg, both hands inside the left leg this time, scooching heel toe, big toe, scooching that left foot out, and even bringing it up a little bit to get you feel comfortable, scooching that right knee back a little bit, and putting the right foot on the mat, just like we did on the other side. Let's tuck the left shoulder underneath the left knee if possible. If that's in your practice. If not, then just bring that left bicep underneath the calf just to kind of motivate it forward a little bit. And again, if it's in your practice, you can come all the way down your hands and knees, um, your hands and your, your right knee, or just a generous bend in the elbow, head bowed. And lean forward with me. Just find your breath here. Mm. 
And on your next inhale, let's tuck those back toes. Bring the arms a little bit more under center, hands a little bit more directly below you. And one more deep inhale to push up. Bringing the left arm around the outside of the left leg. Scooting that right foot forward, sliding the left foot back. We return to go for a moment. Let that bring that left foot up, three legged dog. Bringing that left leg up to stretch it out. Opening up the hips. Ooh, kind of feeling that twist. And bringing it back down. Coming back into down dog. Now that we worked out both sides, how does that feel? Is one side a little bit more tender? Is one side telling you that it's a little bit tighter? And let's bend the knees together. Jump to the top. Coming into our flat back. Let's try our deepest flat back of the day. Bringing the spine, the legs as straight as possible and the spine as flat as possible. Can we get the hands to touch the mat, the fingertips? Can we get them to touch the ankles if they haven't so far? Can we bring them lower on the shins if they haven't been that low so far? Take a minute here and just play with those options and see what feels the best for you. And after you've done that, exhale, keeping the legs as straight as possible, pulling the head forward. And we inhale as we sink back into chair, arms up as high as they've been. And sinking as deep in the hips as possible. And we're here for 10. Nine, eight, really keeping our core engaged. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let it out. Inhale up. Slight back bend. Exhale down. Meeting in mountain. Phew. Okay. Now bringing the feet. As wide as the mat, letting the pinky toe and the ring finger toe curl over the side. Let's open up the hips and as slow as possible, let's lower into the yoga squat. Again, just like we did in chair pose, when I asked you to find your threshold of when you could no longer sink down before you started to fall back, I'm going to ask you to do the same thing here and notice. As you, as you start sinking into your squat, what is your threshold where you feel like nervous that you're going to fall back? And right before you get there, just hold. We're going to hold there for 10 seconds. You can do this. Lowering it down. And you can bring your elbows to the knees to help it support and keeping your spine straight. That should aid your balance here while you're at that threshold for 10. Breathe in, nine, breathe out, eight, breathe in, seven, breathe out, six, in, five, out, four, in, three, out, two, in, one, out, and on that exhale, let's lower back into the seated position. Legs out straight, feet pointed, toes pointed straight to the skies. And with a straight spine from the hinge of the torso, let's just try to ease forward a little bit as much as you feel comfortable coming into a, a sitting forward bend. Maybe you stop here with your hands on your thighs. Imagine we're in that same flat back position as when we were standing. 
how far would you feel comfortable going forward? And is it less comfortable going forward in the seated position? Is it more difficult? What do you think? What are you feeling as you go through this process? And then if you need to pause along the way, take an inhale. And then on the exhale, see if you can get a little bit more forward. Maybe you can grab the feet if you're comfortable. Maybe you can even bring the forehead to the knees here. If that's in your practice, please go ahead and do so. And finding your breath when you exhale, try to sink a little bit deeper, no matter what position you're in. Bowing ahead, we're here for 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then your exhale. And so roll it up slowly, just like we did earlier when we were standing. Now, let's take that right leg. Let's bring it around so that we are in um, a sort of modified half. Uh, actually, let me do it on this side first so you can see better. So that we're in a modified half child's pose of sorts. So bringing that right knee back, just experiment here a little bit. I have my top of my foot, uh, my top of my left foot on the mat, sole pointing towards the sky as much as possible. Left, that's the left leg, I switched it up. And on the right, I have the leg um, grounded to the mat as much as possible, toes extended straight to the sky. And let's try to lean forward, just like we were doing with both legs. Let's try to do that on this side, lowering as much as possible. If it's more comfortable to have your left hand and your left knee here, please do so. You can bring your head to rest on your right bicep. If you want something a little bit more, inhale that left hand up and bring it over here to touch the foot, to hold both hands together. Looking underneath that left bicep, we'll hold here for 10, whatever version of the pose you're in. Finding your breath, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one, and ease back up. So we're swinging that left leg back around. Let's switch it up. Let's bring that right leg behind. Bending at the knee, grounding that left leg and pointing the toes straight up. Leaning forward, whatever version feels good for you. We bring it forward. And we hold here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, And inhale and an exhale, let it go. Bringing that right leg around. Leaning back. Before we close today, let's bring the feet up almost 
you know, bring them as close as possible, almost to the butt, almost to the glutes. Hands on the mat, pushing up, really tucking those shoulders underneath. Bringing the feet a little bit further in, if you can, as you raise the torso. Really use the core and the tops of the thighs. Raise yourself up. Hands can still be flat on the mat. Extend the head out and bring the chin slightly forward to the chest while looking straight up at the sky. To feel a nice stretch in the back of that neck, a nice loving stretch. You can even rock the head side to side. Feel a massage, a nice soothing massage on the back of the head. Try not to let yourself sink down. The tendency here as we get tired is to just let ourselves sink a little bit. And let's stay nice as engaged, even if we're relaxing the back of our head. Inhaling and exhaling slowly. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. I'm going to continue that pattern. We'll be here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Big inhale here. And exhale it down. Bring the feet out. And here, please feel welcome to grab that blanket that you were sitting on earlier if you were using one. And even if you weren't, it'll help you feel better for Shavasana. Please grab it. Cover yourself, put on some socks. Especially if you're in a colder climate, you'll feel your body temperature drop a little bit more drastically as you relax here in post pose. So whatever you have to do to make this the most comfortable and peaceful moments of your day, please go ahead and do that. And let's experiment with our palms face down. Feeling the earth as we relax.
as you will. And then bring your awareness back to the space. With your hands on the mat. Slowly just begin to run your fingertips back and forth. And feel the drift of the earth below you. Begin to bring your awareness to your feet, to your head, to your entire body. Let the breath fill you. Let the breath animate you as you come alive in a new day, as you become a new you and find a new life for you the best that I know. The beauty of the everyday is that it offers us the opportunity to find that version of yourself as those new versions, new lives. Just like Michelle Cassandra Johnson talked about in that passage I read earlier. And now, extending the feet forward, engaging the core, let's inhale the arms up. And give a full body stretch, just like we were waking up for the very first time. And on an exhale, let's come over to our side, whichever side you choose. Hugging the knees in tight. Just give yourself a hug here. Let yourself feel warm, dedicated, loved. Take a big inhale, let the universe enter your nostrils. And as you exhale it out, let's plant the right palm and ease ourselves back up to that seated position when we were using our bolster from earlier or we can come to a kneeling position, whichever you feel is more comfortable. Find whichever leg cross position is more comfortable for you. And before we end, I want to take a, a few moments to revisit the powerful message in Michelle Cassandra Johnson's book and just reread a little bit of it. Yoga means to yoke. It means bringing together things that seem to be in opposition like our mind and body or our heart and spirit. Yoga gives us the opportunity to show up and practice again and again to start over. We are living in a time where we need to begin again. The practice of yoga teaches us to act skillfully and radically, moving us beyond the borders of our individual minds, hearts, bodies, and spirits. So I want to ask you, how can you utilize your yoga practice to move beyond your own mind, body, spirit? Let's consider that as we close out today's practice with a very short meditation, bringing one hand to the chest and the other to the belly. Feel your lungs and your chest inflate, bringing your awareness to the breath. Relaxing the mouth, just like when we were used to Shavasana. Relaxing the shoulders. Relaxing the spine or keeping it engaged. There is a balance, there is a space where engagement and relaxation meet. It's also a lot of beautiful metaphor that I found in life. Thank you. 
like that soft awareness wash over you as you take in the universe around you and your breath. And it fills your chest and your belly with love. And then empty it back out. And with it, provide your compassion, your devotion, everything that makes you the beautiful person you are. Next inhale. Promise yourself that you will do the work. And then the next exhale, hold that intention and your devotion to manifest in the universe. And bring your palms down. You can rest them in your lap or rest them on your knees. Manifestation begins to create itself in the universe. As thoughts come into your mind, just watch them pass. As if you were sitting in a chair overlooking the ocean, and you saw ships sailing by, noticing them, making them part of your story, hopefully acknowledging that they are now for you, and they are for you then. Keeping your eyes closed, let's take one more big inhale together. Bring your palms to your chest. Thank you for joining me in this practice today. The seeker in me recognizes the seeker in you. And um, also thank you for helping me consider how I begin my new life and how I can be always trying to be the best version of myself as possible. It's a great gift. One more inhale, three. Thumbs up, third eye. Bow your head.
Namaste. Please now open your eyes and go about your day, bringing all of this positive energy into the universe. Namaste. Namaste.